Happy 2022 and welcome everyone. My name is Dave Miller, Little League Western Region Instructor and Umpire in Chief for California District 31. Welcome to our five part training series on the Little League Rulebook. These sessions are designed for all parties, including Little League presidents, board of directors, managers, coaches, scorekeepers, and most importantly, our adult and youth umpires. Feel free to share these sessions in groups or with individuals directly. I'm pleased to have with us Gary Grotman, who is a Little League Western Region Rules Trainer and fellow California District 31 staff umpire. Gary will take us through the rule book in these sessions and know that if you have any questions on the material, feel free to reach out to your local league UIC or even Gary and I at any time throughout the season. Lastly, but certainly not least, please know that Little League does not happen without our amazing volunteers like you. You're a significant part of the hundreds of thousands of Little League volunteers worldwide, and whether you know it or not, you're making a huge difference in your communities. So on behalf of Little League's Western Region, thank you and enjoy the videos. All right, a lot of our viewers have uh, been asking for this. Let's talk uh, here in session three about softball. Gary, take it away. Thanks, Dave. This is a chance to understand that if you are enjoying the baseball umpiring job, there are all kinds of things that you can enjoy also on the softball side of the house. Very much similar in nature with three primary differences. The playing field layout is a little different. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about the pitching area. We'll also talk about base running limits. Pretty much everything else is identically the same. So the playing field. The batter's box is a foot further forward of the break and home plate. The reasoning behind that is basically that the girls slap, hit, and drag bunt an awful lot. So you see that extra foot in front of the break at home plate. The catcher's box for the upper divisions, juniors and seniors, is the outside edge of the plate 10 feet back. Strangely enough, the majors and minors catcher's box is a baseline extended for nine feet from the point of plate and is exactly the same as the boys catcher's box. Pitching area is different for the age groups. 43 feet upper division, 40 feet for majors, 35 for minors. One key element that is crucial to understanding the running limitations and the pitching limitations is the eight foot radius circle around the pitcher's plate. The pitcher's plate is bigger than the baseball pitcher's plate for the majors and it is six by 24 and level to the ground. There is no mound in a softball game. Softball bat and a ball, 12 inch optic yellow, we pretty much have gone to a solid optic yellow for all the games. It's an 11 inch ball for the minor division and the bats, two and a quarter diameter, a bat performance factor of 1.20 with the lengths there as determined. All bats must have a non-slip sleeve of 10 inches for a non-wood bat. And you can have a sleeve up to 16 inches long on any wooden or other bat. No pine tar, sticky material, loud on the soft ball. Uniforms have got to be numbered, same color combination. Shirts, oh, excuse me, shorts must be uniform in length. Each player is allowed to choose whether to wear a hat, a visor, or no head covering. Jewelry, like in baseball, is prohibited. Hairbands cannot be on your wrist, cannot be anywhere else, must be in place in the hair if they're going to be used. As in baseball, casts are not allowed during the game on the playing field. However, managers, coaches, and players may be in the dugout during the game. Catchers wear any style of mitt or glove, and first baseman may wear a mitt or glove at first base. Gary, we have a question that just came in, if we may. Certainly. Uh, with regards to bats, in the 1.20 rating, uh, are the girls able to use the 1.15 uh, USA bats that the majors in division uses or in Little League, or can they – can they use each other's bats? We've seen some 1.20s in the majors division for boys. No. You must use a softball bat in softball, 
a baseball bat in baseball. Perfect. Thank you. Yep. On the pitcher's uniform, the pitchers allowed under sleeves, including neoprene sleeves, they shall be a single solid color. Unlike in baseball, the pitcher can have a, a neoprene sleeve on her pitching arm. However, on the wrist or forearm, they can't wear sweatbands or bracelets. On the non-pitching arm, you'll see many, many pitchers have a pitching data band on the non-pitching arm. Like in every other situation, anything on the arm or wrist must be of a single solid color and may not be distracting. Significant difference between baseball and softball is on a bunt. Once again, same basic characteristics, not swung at, intentionally met, and tapped slowly. However, because the girls are so adept at drag bunting and slap hitting, in order to take a pitch, whether in the strike zone or not, the bat must be withdrawn backwards away from the ball. That has to be an intentional and physical act to pull the bat back. Simply standing stationary with the bat in position. In baseball, if it's not in the strike zone, it would be a ball. In softball, by not pulling it back directly, it is going to be a strike. The feint or bluff at a runner, sometimes from the pitcher's circle, closes the appeal window and also the protest of a rule window. It's an additional item in softball that often happens, as I said, when the ball is inside the eight-foot circle. When the pitcher has the ball within that eight-foot circle, runners must immediately advance or return to their base. You will never see a situation where runners are dancing off third base and we end up 10, 15, 20 seconds of brouhaha while that batter, while the runner's dancing around. Once the ball is in the pitcher's possession in the circle, that runner must either advance or return to their base. Additionally, for majors and above, the pitcher, when they deliver the pitch, when the ball leaves the pitcher's hand, the runner may leave the base or if the pitcher attempts to play, or if the pitcher drops the ball in any way, shape, or form. For minors, the runners must remain at the base until the pitch reaches the batter. If you have a runner who leaves early, it's an immediate dead ball, determined is, you call no pitch, and the runner is out. Remember, as a local option, Double first base is allowed in baseball as well, not just exclusively a softball situation. Situation: The white base is in fair territory, and I'm going to say the colored base, the orange base, is completely in foul ground. Any play at first base on the batter runner requires that the batter runner hit the orange base, the defense plays to the white base. If the batter runner touches the white base in that first play, then the batter runner has missed first base. Hmm. And now we have some situations that are exceptions or additional information for that double first base. On a third strike not caught, both the offense and the defense may use either base. The thinking here is if the ball kicks on the third base side or kicks to the first base side, the fielder will be in a position to take the throw on the white base or the orange base, and the runner will see that and go to the other base, still going for the safety aspect of the situation. After the first play on the batter runner, only the white base is used. So for example, if a runner is returning on a fly ball to retouch, or something like that, only the white base is used. Any situation where the batter runner may advance beyond first, such as a hit to the outfield, where there is no chance of a play on the batter runner, the batter runner can use either base. So you got a situation where you can have a, maybe a double or a triple in the outfield, you can hit the orange or you can hit the white and keep going. Any other play at first, such as pickoffs and circle violation situation, 
only the white base will be used. Here's an example of a situation where we have a potential violation there at the base. Ground ball to the outfield, throw to first. We had the runner step on the white base. Would that be a legal situation? It says the runner can hit the white base only if there's no chance of a play there at first base. So ideally, what you should have had was a runner hitting that orange base, even though the ball went into the outfield. In pitching, our limits are set by division, not by age. This is a reason that you can have 12-year-olds overlap and play both in the junior division and in the majors division. If they have a situation where they're pitching in a majors game and a juniors game on the same day, the division of the game you're playing rules on whether your pitch count limit is set or the day's rest limit is set. So if you start in a majors game, pitch six innings, and then go to the junior game in the afternoon, there's no day's rest limit, there's no innings per day limit, so you can proceed no problem. If, however, you pitch in a junior game and throw six innings, and the, excuse me, go seven innings, for example, then you go to that majors game, you cannot pitch in that majors game that later that day. But if it's a partial, then you can do going both ways. A little more explanation on that 12-year-old exception. Cumulative, both divisions on a given day. And as we said, the second game determines what the limits are going to be. And day's rest is always based on the division for the game being played. Pitchers who are removed from the mound. If majors, pitchers, and below remain in the game, they can return any time but only once per inning in the same inning removed. Juniors and seniors removed from the mound in the game may return, provided there's no mandatory play, visits per pitcher, or substitution violations which occur. In all divisions, a pitcher may be pinch hit or pinch run for and then return in the other half of the inning without violation. Softball limits your pitchers to five in a game. Same set up for an ineligible pitcher. If you've thrown a live pitch, then a protest of that ineligible pitcher is warranted. Softball schedules. You can play two double headers in a seven day period. Three games in one day are not allowed. In rule 412, we talk about finishing a game ahead of the next regularly scheduled game. That would let you play the two games regularly scheduled for that given day and then finishing the partial to still be within the rules. Upper divisions can play three games in a day. We can have time limits on those games, but they meet, must meet the minimum innings or the run rule to be complete games. Girls teams may not play boys teams. Prior to the pitch in softball, pivot foot on the rubber, trail foot behind or on the rubber. Both feet on the ground, shoulders in line with first and third base, in other words, facing the batter. Signs will be taken with the hands apart while on the pitcher's plate. The pitcher then brings her hands together one to 10 seconds before starting his delivery. A backward step while the hands come together is legal. A backward step after the hands are together is not legal. So directly facing home plate, both feet on the ground and the stride foot going forward must remain within the 24 inch length of the pitcher's plate, even though in a little league, it is not marked by chalk. As you step forward here, the blue foot on the right side is on the line and is legal. The red foot on the left there is outside the lines and is not a legal pitch. Two legal standing positions and six illegal because either the pivot foot is off the pitcher's plate or the stride foot is outside the 24 inch limitations.
The windmill, which is the classic softball pitching position, is allowed, but also the slingshot delivery, which is basically the pitcher breaks her hands, raises her arm up to the top of the circle, and then brings it straight forward again. The pitch start with a hand separate. You've got to start, once you start the pitch, you've got to deliver the pitch immediately. In order to step off once the hands are brought together, the pitcher must disengage the pitcher's plate before the hands are separated. So you've got to keep the hands separated, step off, and then break the hands. One step forward where the non-pivot foot is allowed in the pitch. You must throw four pitches to do an intentional walk. When the runner is called out for leaving the base before the pitch is delivered or released, you declare no pitch. If a pitch is delivered during suspension of play, no pitch. And if the catcher is not in the catcher's box, it is a no pitch situation. Crow hops, leaps, and sidearm deliveries give the team an unfair advantage. If you're not in contact with the pitcher's plate, that's illegal. Foreign substance applied, quick pitch. And if you throw to a base while in contact with the pitcher's plate, unlike baseball, this is illegal. Penalty is a ball to the batter. As in baseball, if an illegal pitch is batted, then the manager may have an option on taking the play or taking the penalty. A leap is both feet off the ground while the pitch is being delivered. A crow hop, the pivot foot leaves the pitcher's plate, replants forward, and pushes off from that forward position. And sidearm delivery is when the wrist is further from the body than the elbow as the arm passes the hip. As it says, the plate umpire needs to watch two things. Stepping on the pitcher's plate with the hand separated, and then long enough to take the sign together, step in the pitch. That pitch was legal. She had her hands broken, stepped on. Now, she brings her hands together here as she was stepping on. That makes the pitch illegal. It leads to the potential for a quick pitch. Softball is very, very interested in making sure the batter knows exactly where the ball is at all times. Once again, hands together, it's illegal. As pitchers step back, the difference between legal and not. The pivot foot is the critical item to watch. So here we have the pitcher steps on, separated hands together, and the pitch. Notice she dragged her pivot foot away from the pitcher's plate, making it a legal pitch. Now watch her pivot foot this time. Whoops. That is the definition of a crow hop. She stepped forward and pushed off from a more forward position, gaining about a foot or so in her delivery. Again, you see that she actually lets the ball go about three to four feet in front of the pitcher's plate. Leaping is the one you'll most commonly see in majors and junior softball. The pitcher has got to drag away from the pitcher's plate on her delivery. Sometimes hard to be sure. This is critical. If you think you saw it, you didn't. Give the benefit of the doubt to the pitcher if you're not absolutely positive. In that case, we'll see it in slow motion. No doubt that she came airborne on that pitch. Giving the advantage of releasing from a more forward position. Now, the sidearm delivery is a little tougher to pick up sometimes. You won't see it very often, but here's an older video that I've got of a sidearm delivery. Remember, the wrist is outside of the elbow as it passes the pitcher's hip. 
This last picture gives you a slow-mo and gives you a really good line diagram of what you're seeing. You'll see that wrist is well outside the elbow and gives the pitcher a chance to use much more uh, velocity and a lot more action on the given pitch. Two ways that you can have a drop ball, if the pitcher actually just simply drops it, or in her motion, if her hand comes forward and the ball drops straight down. With the drop ball, there is no lift and carry past the hip, so the ball will go straight down. The ball remains live and the runners may advance with the ball to the batter. Bottom line in pitching, pivot foot pushes off and drags away. Leaping, crow hopping sidearm are an unfair advantage. Don't make calling illegal pitches your hallmark. And for some folks like Dave, who don't like to see 147 balls in a given game, find those strikes as best you can. Quick recap of the differences. The playing field has a couple of differences. The pitching area is a little different and the base running is a little different. I would highly commend those of you who are looking for another challenge and have got the opportunity to work softball in your area. It is really a great opportunity. The young ladies play hard, they play pretty well, and I would recommend that. Dave, back to you. Gary, thank you. I have two questions that came in while you were presenting there. One is with regards to that second bag at first base. Uh, in a situation where we have a third strike not caught and the ball rolls away uh, in foul territory, let's say to the first base side, and that, and that batter runner can advance, we've had, uh, can they receive the ball, or can they pick up the ball, throw it to first base, and that first baseman be on the outside bag for that out? On the, on the bag in foul territory. Correct. Yes. The, the, the reason they do that is exactly the reason the ball kicking away down first base or third base. The fielder will get to the base faster than the runner. So the fielder sets up on the base that makes the most sense for a direct throw. The runner should be coached well enough to observe the position of the fielder and go to the other base. Okay. So you, you can switch it around so, on that. Perfect. So defensively, they can use either bag uh, in that situation where it was a drop, th uh, third strike not caught. And if you end up in a situation where both young ladies go for the same base, you treat it just like you would a single base, and uh, you, know, you may have a train wreck. Okay. The second one is uh, pitchers receiving signs. Of course, in baseball, we want them engaged, and we want them receiving them from the catcher. Um, in softball, are they allowed to be off the – the pitching plate and receiving them from the dugout? Uh, first part, no. Second part, yes. You can be in a situation where you've got to be on the pitcher's plate, hands disengaged while taking or appearing to take the sign. Now, you'll notice with the data sleeve, they'll get, you know, whatever signals from the manager or the catcher. They then open up their data sleeve, look at it, and put it back down again. That's one of the reasons the hands are separated. And therefore, then they bring their hands together, one to 10 second pause, and then commence to the pitch. So in both cases, to avoid the illegal pitch in baseball and softball, you want the signs being taken on the pitcher's plate. Perfect. Well, great information today on softball. And from what I understand is anybody out there that wants to cross over an umpire softball, you're willing to drive to them. Uh, to, to work the game with them. So I think that's great for our uh, umpires in the Western region. So uh, thank you for your time today, Gary, on uh, session number three here. Everybody, we look forward to uh, for you joining us for session number four. Thank you. Take care.